Okay, so I'm going over um, an incentive compatibility constraint, participation constraint problem from the Halivarian chapter, and this particular example is an airline pricing their airline tickets. So I think it's helpful to frame this as principal agent, in which case we have a principal who's the airline, and they're making a decision about pricing, of course that's their choice variable. And they're doing that in order to incentivize these two different types of customers, tourists and business class people, to choose the packages that were designed for them. And really what they want is they want the business travelers who are willing to pay more for tickets, they want them to sort themselves into the first class tickets, and they want the tourists to sort themselves into the coach class tickets in the back of the plane. And they need to price these such that the business travelers don't choose the coach class tickets and the tourists don't choose the first class ticket. So how do they price in order to achieve that kind of basically price discrimination? And let's look at that, but first let's remind ourselves of the principal agent relationship here. So the airlines are going to be in the principal role and the consumers are going to be in the agent role. So the airlines choice variable, um, or in this case two variables, the price of the coach class ticket and the price of the first class ticket. These are going to be exogenous variables for the consumers. The consumer's choice is simply which type of ticket to buy. All right, so let's start with our incentive compatibility constraints. And the, the interpretation of these constraints are always some form of, um, from each of the different customer types, so we, we need to do this for from the tourist's perspective and then separately from the business person's perspective, we're going to have some kind of inequality that represents my package is preferred to the other guy's package. So the tourist's package, they should prefer the coach class rather than the first class package and the business class traveler should should prefer the first class package over the coach class. As a matter of fact, it's helpful to write out who, who is supposed to have which package. So let's do that. Okay, the tourist's package is the coach class ticket. The business traveler's package is the first class ticket. So let's start with our incentive compatibility constraints. And we will start with the um, tourist's inequality, so we want to do this interpretation from the tourist perspective. I prefer my package rather than jumping over and grabbing the other guy's package. So the tourist is going to value their package at 300, that's the value they have for the coach seat. Okay, so here we have the tourist's value for the coach class seat, and this of course is the seat that the firm is trying to push onto the tourist, um, minus the price of the coach class seat. So this is the total value of the tourist for the tourist's package on this side of the equation. And then the other side of the equation is if the tourist took the other guy's package, and the other guy's package is the first class seat. So this entire inequality needs to be from the same perspective, and that's the tourist perspective. So we have the tourist's value for the first class seat, that's not their package, minus the price of the first class seat. So tourist's value for the other guy's package, the first class seat, tourist's value for their own package, the coach seat. So this inequality will guarantee that the tourist takes up the right package. Now, um, we're going to need to rearrange these inequalities so that we can actually price our tickets. And to do that, we've actually got two different choice variables here, price of coach, price of first class, and we need to get those over together on the same side, and that's, this is going to give us a price differential between them. And we, we know that the first class ticket is probably going to be more expensive, so we want to get first class ticket minus coach class ticket, so this is going to be talking about the premium between the first, the difference between the first class and the coach class tickets. Let's just do the algebra to rearrange this to give ourselves um, a nice price differential. So that just tells us that the price difference between first class and coach class tickets 
needs to be at least $80 or else the tourists are going to switch up to first class and that's not what you want. You want to force them into the coach class tickets. So um, we know we need to at least make the price differential $80 to achieve that. Now let's look at the other perspective and that's going to be the business person's perspective and come up with a, an equation that says the business person's first class ticket, their package needs to be more attractive to the business traveler than um, moving down to coach. Okay, so we have on this side of the equation, we have the business person's package from their perspective. And what is their package? Their package is um, the first class ticket. That's the package meant for them. Their value for a first class seat is 600. And of course, um, their total value for buying the package is the 600 value minus the price they pay for a first class seat. This is the business traveler's package from their perspective. And that needs to be better than um, the coach class ticket from the business traveler's perspective. So the business traveler, if we're talking about the business traveler's perspective, we definitely need to be in the business travel's pers traveler's perspective column. Um, if what is their value for the other guy's package, the coach class package, that's 500. Um, and their total value for taking up that package is 500 minus the price of the coach ticket. So if this inequality holds, or certainly if it's strictly greater than, um, it's going to be, we'll leave that though, it's going to be um, forcing the business class people to choose the first class ticket rather than the coach class ticket. Now we can do the same adjustment, the same algebra like we did over here. We just moved, algebraically moved some things to the other side to get the price differential alone by itself. And that's going to be meaningful to us when we're setting these prices. So let's go ahead and rearrange this um, incentive compatibility constraint from the business perspective to get a price differential. And of course, we, we know that the first class ticket's probably going to be more. It's going to be pricier than the other ticket. So ideally, we'd like the first class ticket to be positive minus the coach class to give us a price differential. So let's take this to the other side and do the algebra. Okay, so what we have here is we know that the price differential between the first class and coach class tickets needs to be less than $100, because if it's not less than $100, the business class people won't take the first class seats. They'll just switch over to the um, coach class seats, which is not what the airline wants. So here we have this range. We know that the price differential between the two needs to be somewhere between $80 and $100. And so that's helpful information, but of course it's not complete information if we want to actually price the tickets. So let's keep these two inequalities that we just derived in mind and let's move on to our participation constraints which will solve the problem. Okay, so the participation constraints, um, the interpretation of those is going to be I prefer my package over my opportunity cost. And of course, just like with the incentive compatibility constraints, these are from the perspective of our, uh, our tourist and our business person or our agent and the principal agent relationship. And we have the principal that's trying to set prices for these airline tickets. So um, when, will, uh, when will these players actually buy tickets from this airline, and let's look at those constraints now. Okay, so um, this is the tourist's package, and the tourist package is the same as it was when we were doing incentive compatibility constraints, that is, the tourist's value for their own package minus the price they pay for their package, which is the price of coach. And that needs to be preferred to their opportunity cost. And we're not given any other information here, so the opportunity cost will be zero. They prefer this. This needs to be greater than or equal to zero, because of course they can't get negative value from buying the ticket, so it's fairly simple. Um, the price needs to be less than or equal to 300. And let's do the same thing from the business person's perspective. So 
this is just saying the first class person's or the business person's package, which is they get the first class ticket and they pay the first class price. This is the same first class package that we saw in, when we did the incentive compatibility constraints and that needs to be greater than or equal to zero, which implies that the price of the first class ticket needs to be less than or equal to 600, just doing the algebra with this constraint. All right, so we have four different constraints, and now we just need to construct prices that meet all four constraints. And usually the best way of doing that when you're pricing things is to start with the um, lower priced item, which is the coach class ticket, and set that price as high as possible because of course the airline wants to maximize profits. So set the price of the coach ticket at 300 to begin with. And we know we can adjust later if we need to, this is just giving us a starting point. And then we ask ourselves, what should we charge for the first class ticket? And of course, we'd like to charge as much as possible. We'd like to charge $600, which is what the, the business travelers are willing to pay. But if we do that, um, there's a $300 price difference between the two uh, tickets, and that, that doesn't fit within this $80 200, um, range that we came up with for the price differential. As a matter of fact, if the price difference is that high, then the business travelers are just going to switch down and choose coach class. So you're not going to sell any first class tickets if you try to set the price at 600. So you set the price as high as you can while satisfying these two incentive compatibility constraints and that as high as you can would be $100 over the $300 price. So let's try that and think through if it makes sense. Okay, in this case we have um, both incentive compatibility or, sorry, both participation constraints are met. The price of uh, the tourist ticket is $300, which they're willing to pay. The price of the first class ticket is below the amount that the first class traveler, the business traveler, is willing to pay. So these are both met. And the difference between the prices we know needs to be between $80 and $100 if we're going to properly sort people between their different packages. And in fact, the price difference is in that range and it's as high as it can be, um, making the price of the first class as high as we possibly can make it while still sorting our two types of customers properly. So these will be the prices set by the airline in this situation.